Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Student of the Gun Radio. It is episode number 1164. And this is going out the week prior to Thanksgiving, or the actually the day prior to Thanksgiving 2022. Yes, indeed. Yes. And uh, as an administrative note, uh, we will be taking off the Thanksgiving weekend. And we will be relaxing with family and friends. So uh, there will be no shows Thursday or Friday. You have 8,000 shows to yeah. listen to. So if you really, 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 really need it. And if you really need to hear my voice, you can actually pop over to the Legion of Michael and listen to Legion of Michael podcast, which you should be doing already. Absolutely. And if you're not listening to Legion of Michael, you can go to the SOTGU, Student of the Gun University podcast and Catch up to those. Yep. And in addition to that, I was remembered something that uh, like a month ago or so, I said that I was going to make a form and a thing for, what's your favorite episode of the bonus hour? Remember yeah, that? you were going to do that. Did you do that? No. But oh. since we're taking this weekend off, or I guess not the All weekend, right. but the, the holiday off, uh, we're uh, I'll do that then. So you can, here's what you can do. If you're a member of the grad program, and if you're not a member of the grad program, now is the perfect time to do that. Uh, it is bl- blasting that out. It'll be. I'll see if I can put it on the homepage. I don't remember how to navigate our site. Is what's your favorite episode of the bonus hour? Because we have approximately seven million of them. So if you haven't gone back and uh, <laughs> you haven't gone back, a little bit of uh, hyperbole here. Uh, Hyper. Uh, that's a hyperbole. Hyper- yes, that's the epitome yeah. of hyperbole. <laughs> yeah. So this weekend, if you haven't uh, caught up on the old backlog, or if you've never gone back and listened to the old backlog, now's the perfect time. Go through them and decide which one's your favorite episode. But yes, indeed. Yeah, yes, so indeed. there will not be a episode this Friday, Saturday, or no, not Saturday, Thursday or Friday. Yes, got it. Good. Got it. All right, now everybody understands. All right, cool. Play the music, Johnny. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right. Uh, yes, indeed. If you got questions, we've got answers. So if you're over there in the grad program, or not grad program, the uh, the Discord, anybody can be in the Discord. You don't have to be in the grad program to be in the Discord. But if you're in the Discord channel, you got questions, we have answers. Throw them in there. Yes. Uh, does my face look thinner? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I don't think my face looks that thin right now. No, but uh, yeah. Um, all right, let's go ahead and just jump right into the Duracoat Finished Firearm of the Week. All right, well, we always remind you that if you would like to Duracoat like a professional, whether it's guns, knives, ammo cans, mailboxes. I don't care what you're Duracoating. If you'd like to do that, then you should go to Duracoat University and learn how. We were there. And uh, matter of fact, we were there for the the uh, the initial launch of the Duracoat the University. The inaugural? That's, the, that's right. That's right. But that's what we're going to talk about this week. So many of you who have been following us for uh, any number of years now know that our dearly departed friend steve lauer had a he had a labor of love pet project that he actually worked on for a couple of years and they premiered it at the shot show in farts what do i want to say uh either 19 or 20 was either the shot show 19 or shot show 2020 i think it was shot show 19 i think it was in uh 2019 shot show but it's a little thing it's called the t-rex the duracoat machine hummer replica it's essentially a uh, it's like a hummer body but steve put i don't know many 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 he put 
many, many, many thousands of dollars uh, into the uh, this thing. It was manufactured by the Jurassic Truck Company, um, and it's a. It's if you go to if you follow the link, uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, if you've never seen it, uh, it's it's pretty pretty badass. Uh, it, it's got. It's it's dura coated, obviously. All of the stuff in it is dura coated. All the pieces, parts, the rims, the body, the accessories, that everything is dura coated. It has a monster engine in it. It's got a basically a race car engine uh, in it. I don't know what size engine it is. But it's got a race car engine. It's got a 1919 machine gun mount on the back. Uh, and if you look at the photographs. It's got just all kinds of G whiz stuff, um, <laughs> all the all the cool stuff that you would possibly want. Uh, yeah, if it, you're it's, watching it's, the video version of the show right now, you can see it. Yeah, it's got replica grenades. It's got like the <laughs> the pineapple frag grenades <laughs> on it, and it has a 50 caliber. I think it's a 50 cal shifter, and yeah, it's got all kinds of stuff. Uh, it has a winch. It has night, and it looks like it has nitrous tanks. Uh, nitrous oxide tanks uh but the reason i'm bringing this up you're like wow that's that's nice and everything but so what well so what is you could own it so uh the christmas gift to you is that it is for sale serious somewhat. inquiries only somewhat what do you mean somewhat TX T Rex the the Duracoat Machine Hummer replica. It's a Hummer replica. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm looking at. Do you not understand? Right yes. Okay. It the the T Rex is for sale. Yes. It's not a copy of the T Rex that that it's not a replica of the one that Steve built. It's, oh. Yeah. No, it's it's not an official. It's not an official Hummer product. That's why they got to put that word there. If you look, it was manufactured by Jurassic Truck Company as a Hummer replica for the movie industry. Uh, it was purchased okay. by Steve Lauer, completely gutted and modified to a supercharged monster truck that you see today. Um, the minigun, the, 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 the minigun's actually spin. Do they fire? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Ah, that'd be no. too cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, one minigun would cost you as much as the as the vehicle. Worth that would make it even a, be a better bargain. Yeah. So uh But yes, if you would like the it's like I said, it's cooler than the Batmobile. It's way cooler than the Batmobile. Uh if you would like to purchase that if you're a serious individual or you know someone who has some serious ducats cuz these things aren't free. Mhm. Mm and so all this to say, uh, if you would like to donate for us to be able to buy it, go to uh, <laughs> slash T-Rex and just uh, send us some money and we'll buy it. Yeah, yeah. And That's once we get thing. once we get to 200,000, we will purchase it now. Uh, but However, yeah, if, if you do end up buying it, you are obligated to come drive down here and let us touch it. That's right. That's right. Well, I've, I've touched it. I've been in it. I have. Uh, we actually filmed uh, a segment inside of it. At Shot Show. I'm sure I it must have been 2019. It must have been 2019. Yeah. Uh, I, what the hell was that? Uh, I was looking it up, and their their earliest videos are from 2016. So I don't know if they I guess he started the project in 2016 and debuted it in 2019. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Was it? Uh, I can't remember. But anyway, it was so it was so big and massive that they couldn't actually have it in the booth on the floor because the floor is not strong enough to support the weight. So they had to put it in the lobby area. And if you know anything about the, the Sands Exposition Center, there's if you come in from the, I don't know, is it the north side or the west side or east side? I can't remember. I can't remember which side it is. Um, but if you come in from the one side, you're like on the ground level. And that's where when Ford and Chevy and Dodge or whatever, when they display their newest model of super cool hunting truck, that's where they park them. Uh, so it was parked at the base of the escalators uh, in the Sands Exposition on the hard concrete because they couldn't put it on the show floor because it's too heavy. Because the show floor actually is, there's a basement underneath the show floor, so they couldn't do that. 
Uh, but yeah, that is the Duracoat, uh, the moment of the week. If you guys want to check it out, you know, it doesn't cost you nothing to look, right? Yep. So uh, go to the, the link that's in the show notes to Duracoat and uh, check it out and support our friends at Duracoat. They're a family owned business, they're good people. And, uh, and if you're curious, Dad, I actually did find the video. Oh, you did? The original video or the one with me? The one with you. Oh, we'll show it. Camera one, right? All right. So, Bert, look at camera one, not Jared's camera. <laughs> can it the is audience I, see this? Yeah, they can see it. The Pimp Hand of America. And I'm coming to you from the floor of SHOT Show 2019. And I'm <laughs> sitting in the Beast. I'm sitting in the T-Rex. This is the official monster vehicle. If I fall out of this thing, don't you laugh. The official monster vehicle from the folks at Duracoat Firearm Finishes. And with me is Bert with Duracoat Firearm Finishes. And Bert is going to tell us all about what is new and cool from our friends at Duracoat. Bert, take it away. Thanks, Bob. This year, all right. We are be you, you can cut it down. Shot. So there you go. All you guys that are watching the video, if you missed the video, then, well, you should have watched the video. You should have watched it live. Studentalgear.com, uh, or on our OTT apps, or Juxy. It's everywhere. If you yeah, want there to you go. The there stuff. you go. So it was 2019 when 2019? they debuted it. I knew it. See, Steve was sending me pictures for like a year or two. He's like, hey, I got this project. Check it out. Check it out. And he's like, this is what I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to put machine gun on the back and i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna put a nitrous tank on it and <laughs> yeah so he started this was his labor of love and now you can own it you can own it it's a 550 horsepower engine it is a dyno tuned to 550 horsepower supercharged uh, it's a super yeah you could super you, you could go stupidly fast in that in that thing and all Probably. you single guys in the audience <laughs> just saying thanks for asking you might have a new mobile. all right yeah <laughs> moving all along yeah and hey bert how you doing uh sds imports the sponsors of student of the gun radio the title sponsor of student of the gun radio thank you very much to them for doing that and tis the season to treat yourself to a 10 millimeter 1911 or a new shotgun, or a uh, a compact 1911, or the T, not the it was it PX Niner Gen Three, yes, indeed. the Papa X Ray Niner Generation Three tactical pistol, lots of cool stuff from those guys, and they're they're releasing new products all the time, so pay attention to what they're doing. Remind me, is SDS going to be at Shot Show? Oh, of course, absolutely, they will. Rock on! So we'll be seeing our buddies down there at Shot Show, and we're down there in January. Yeah. That'll be exciting. And you know who yeah. else is going to be at Chacho? Show? Who? High Point Firearms. That, that's true. I think. I thought you were going to say Adam. Who's oh, that? he's actually Braun Strowman again. Oh, yeah, he's Braun Strowman. Oh, is he going to be there? That'd be cool. Well, I don't know if he's going to be there. I hope he, so. He, li he likes to go, and but if he, but unless he has a, unless he has a commitment, unless they have a, a wrestling match, a uh, big wrestling match that week. When is the Royal Rumble, you ask? Fantastic I don't know. question. I do not know when is the Royal Rumble. But talk about High Point while I look this up. Yeah, uh, High Point uh, just released a 30 Super Carry pistol. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the Yeet Cannon, uh, the YC9, should be, well, it, it has been promised, and I've, I've seen some little teaser pictures of it. It has been promised for uh shot show this year you're like well what i mean yeah i, I shut up nobody knew in the year 2020 that the world was about to lose its mind and fall apart nobody knew nobody could anticipate that so it's nobody's fault well it is it's actually the democrats fault but uh Juxy at Juxy.com. If you go to studentofthegun.com slash Juxy, that's what you should be doing. And when you go there, uh, you can follow our channel, which you should do. If you have not followed our channel on Juxy, well, shame on you. What are you waiting for? Do it. And uh, there you go. 
There you go, Juxi. It is uh, your story, our technology, a better future. They are not beholden to Google, and they are not beholden to YouTube. So if YouTube decides you're not allowed to see that video anymore, no one's allowed to see it, uh, it pulls it down, well, it won't disappear from Juxi because Juxi does not use YouTube or Google. They are not reliant upon either one of them. So if Google or YouTube decide to restrict you or spank you or punish you or whatever because you're a gun person, then there's nothing we can do about that. But what we can do is your stuff can still be up and available on Juxy.com. And one of the things that is available is the Legion of Michael podcast, because I don't know if people have been one second. Paying attention, but in addition to the po- the normal podcast feed that you can, of course, find on iTunes, iHeartRadio, etc., everywhere that matters, you can also find the visualization version, I don't know what to call it, the video version of the show up there if you want to be able to read what uh, Dad is saying alongside mm. him actually saying it. So just uh, just another avenue to get the word out there. There you go. Are, are those really clean uh, closed captions or... They're like, like 95%. Okay. There's a couple Remember of like when, A's that are supposed when, to be ands and stuff like that. They didn't put hyphens. <laughs> Do you remember back in the dark ages when YouTube first activated the closed captioning option? And it was like 25% accurate. Oh, it was crazy. It was crazy. I, I think that their computer, that English was its third language. <laughs> it wasn't even a second you got language. got binary, yet. JavaScript, and English. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but anyway. Anyway. So, there you go. There you go. JUXXI.com. All right. Listen louder, kids. Attention new listeners, we produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. You can go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. However, but it, but it, but it, that's old, folks. That's not old, folks. <laughs> if you're also looking for something that's not quite SOTG, but made by someone from SOTG, uh, I wrote a new book. Hi. Hey, good it's, job, it's, Zach. It's not a follow-up to the first to the uh, first one, the fiction book. This one is more like a. It's called 150 Rules for Life, Volume One of Infinity. It's what? one of infinity. What? Because there's so many rules, there's no way we're going to be able to co- to. You know, catalog them all. That's we right. can just, just whenever. Exactly. We're we're starting from one, working our way up. It's kind of like a coffee table book full of little pieces of advice, pieces of information, and just generally some good rules for life. Whether all it's right. you know, pet ownership, romance, general life advice, business advice, business rules, just real short form, easy to digest, little one page, one rule, little picture to go with it. Kind of like dad rules. Kind of like dad rules. Very kinda much like so kind rules. of like dad rules. Yeah. And in addition to that, this is it's the kind of book that's for anyone. Yeah, it's no, for anyone. It's yeah, for you him. get it for give it to someone for Christmas. Christmas. It, it, you know, we don't really have coffee tables anymore. People yeah. don't have coffee table books. But what what, what yeah. do they have? We, uh, toilets. Bathroom literature. That's there you right. Go. That's it's, right. it's a good bathroom literature. Run. In fact, I think rule number four is actually about bathroom. Put etiquette. this book in your bathroom. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh let me see if i can find it real fast uh it loads in weird sometimes very quickly well i can't find it anyway all right but yeah one of the rules is about bathroom etiquette and yeah so if you're interested in that like some and somebody who is just you know would just, like you know a co- like a ba- some bathroom literature something small if simple, you're a person who enjoyable. uses the bathroom on a regular exactly <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you were if you were someone who was thinking like, man, I'd really like to get Zach the Shipping Ogre a Christmas gift, but what would be in it for me, right? I want to get him something, but then what what do I get out of it? Well, here you go. You can go ahead and get yourself a copy of this book, and then your present to me can be a five star review. And what you get out of it is a cool little book. There you go. There you go. So, so it's welcome. win win win, baby. 
Everybody wins. It's win freaking win, baby. There you go. So it's called 150 Rules for Life, Volume 1 of Infinity by ZJ Markle. It's on Amazon as a Kindle or a paperback right now. And if you're one of the Kindle Unlimited freaks, if you're one of those people, if you like the Kindle Unlimited, uh, you can get it immediately right this second and have it, well, and have it sent uh, directly to your device and start digesting it immediately. Yes, exactly. indeed. I guess I'm also a Kindle a Unlimited notes. person. Are you? I think I am. Congratulations. Because uh, I just read a book this weekend on Kindle, on my Kindle device, and so I guess that must be me. It must be me. Uh, it's kind of weird, though, how they separate it from your main account. Like, I, you know, I'm in my main account uh, on my laptop, on Amazon and I go to a Kindle book and it says this is not available or this feature is not available on this one but if I go to my phone and I open it on my phone it says yeah go for it there buddy no I don't know uh don't know and don't know and don't care enough to <laughs> to research it <laughs> but what I do care about is Brownells and our buddies at Brownells and their bullet points so do that Bang, boom. All right. We got, we got a two-parter today uh, in our – got two-parter in our Brownells bullet points. Part number one, this is uh, a Yuletide special. It's a Christmas special, and I have no idea how long these are going to last. So if you want one, you better get it fast. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say to you is if you want one of these turkeys, you better get on it and get it fast because get while the they're, game's good. they're on sale and it is the season. And of course, as soon as this goes live, everybody out there, it's going to start yakking about it and they'll be like, oh, ooh, I want one. So in stock, they have Magpul official ugly Christmas sweaters. Yes, indeed. They have the official. That's a thing now. I was in the a mall. I never go to shopping malls, like never. But the other day, I took the babies. I took the stroller and the grandbabies, and I just need to kill some time. We need to walk around. So we went into a mall, and we walked around. And Ruth looked at the Christmas trees and decorations and stuff, and it was cute. And Ellie just looked at pretty colored lights, and she took a nap. But, uh, yeah, there was one store that had... I can't remember what it was. It was like a Hot Topic t- kind of store, but not Hot Topic. Spencer's? Mm, maybe it was Spencer's. I bet it was Spencer's. Box lunch, maybe? Uh, I, think it was, I think it was Spencer's had ugly Christmas sweaters, like a whole huge display of them right up front. So, tis the season to get yourself, and they currently have them in stock uh, in 3XL, medium, small, XL, 2XL, and regular L. And then if that's not enough, you can throw in an ugly Christmas beanie. You, you can throw in a matching winter hat uh, to go with it. So so real quick, real quick. When, when you first started this, you said, apparently this is, are you, have you not been following the, are you, did you, did you mean like specifically like, wow, this, or did, have you missed out on the whole train that is the ugly Christmas sweater? Tradition? Oh, no, I know. I know that that's a thing now. Okay. It's a thing. It's been a thing for a few years. Yeah. Uh, and you, your brother's got the, uh, he's got the ugly. Darth the Vader one. Darth Vader, Star Wars Christmas one, and, and so on and so forth. So there's that. So that's completely not really gun related. I mean, it kind of is. It's Brown Hills and it's Magpul. Um, but you can have it sent directly to your house you don't need to send it to your ffl dealer a little easier now yeah what did we talk about last week now last week we talked about what well it's it's getting colder it's getting colder right and uh in addition to it's getting colder we need to uh we need to go ahead and prepare ourselves for what our winter gun build projects yes every year we talk about this like hey you know, by springtime, by the time it gets warm again and the snow melts, you want to have a new cool firearm 
uh, to use, display, uh, go out and shoot with, whatever. Well, Brownells just released, this is brand freaking new, a BRN4 piston, P-I-S-T-O-N, upper receiver kit. And this is based upon the HK416. All right. So if you guys out there in the audience, you're like, ooh, I know about that. I have heard about the HK416. I am aware of that. Uh, but you, but then you looked at the price tag of an HK416 and you thought, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> uh, you thought, yeah, uh, I don't have the kind of ducats to purchase an HK416. Now, do you have the ducats to build your own? You're like, what? What? What is this you speak of? And of course, the 416, the official 416 is a select fire gun. Um, and, uh, you know, it has the, the, the happy go fast switch on it and, and all that stuff. But what Brownells has done is these are new parts. Uh, they're not used parts. They're new parts. And uh, it is, you know, the, the HK is the HK 416 is it's like hard to find in the United States. And eh. but if you really are a geek, if you are a super black rifle gun geek and you look at yourself and you're like, you know, I'm a pretty smart guy. I could probably figure out how to assemble and build a 416 style gun, a piston operated gun. Well, what are you waiting for? You don't have to wait for anything now, actually, because you can purchase the kit uh, from Brownells and it does not have a lower receiver, which means that you can have it shipped directly to your house. It's just parts. It's pieces, parts. You have to provide the lower receiver for yourself. But if you do that, then you can build yourself a very, very cool. If you want to be the coolest kid at the range in the springtime, say, look what I built over the winter. I built a piston, a piston operated rifle that's based upon the HK416. It's called the BRN4 upper receiver build kit and they are available right now as i speak the words into this microphone and i don't know how many kits they have you can choose from a 4.5 inch or a 16 inch barrel that's chambered in 556 nato uh, as aluminum handguard as a you know aluminum forend with uh you know all of the pick rails and everything on it and basically it comes with everything you need to assemble the upper receiver uh, except for hand tools, you gotta get your own hand tools. But it does have a special barrel nut wrench, so there's that. So, if that is something you're into, if that's something that, uh, well, that you're uh, you're happy about, well, get on it, man, get on it. That's from Brownell. So either you're getting Christmas sweaters or you're getting <laughs> parts for your winter gun build. Oh, and P.S. I don't know where you are on planet Earth right now, but where I am, it's dark by five o'clock and it doesn't get light until after seven. So the amount of useful sunlight per day is pretty low. It's time to start loading up on your vitamin D. It's time to start taking vitamin D supplements every day because you're not going to get enough vitamin D. And if you don't, you're going to be deficient. So start doing it. All right. Now it's time for me to be quiet and let's act to talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed, shopsotg.com. But more importantly than checking it out today, which you should also do, you need to check it out this Friday because we got our Black Friday sales coming hard, coming heavy, and it's going to be great. We got books, <laughs> medical hard gear, and heavy, patches. and hot. Yes, indeed. And the ever so quickly acclaimed uh, USMC Marine Corps Leadership Traits, USMC Marine Corps, Marine Corps Leadership Traits poster will be on sale. That 
And we got tons of great bundles. Whether you need books, medical gear, something else, I think. Get it in a bundle. Save even more ducats. Get like seven... Uh, not not seven. Multiple great gift, Christmas gifts for one great price. Calm down. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Zach is so freaking excited about this sale. I really he's am. It's the biggest time he's of the bes- year. He's beside himself. Yeah. He's beside himself. Cookie's actually <laughs> is beside me. In addition to that, we'll also be the return of the ever so coveted Black Friday box. Every Whenever you place an order, you have the chance to win the extra gear and awesome stuff that comes within the Black Friday box. Now, a reminder, if you want, because gambling laws, you can send a letter to our PL box, which I don't remember what it is. I'll put it up on the screen right now. And request that you be a part of the uh, contest as well. For free, right. of no charge. All you have to do is, sign, is send a handwritten letter, and we will put you in there. But for everyone else, if you place an order over Black Friday weekend, you may or may not get a bunch of extra stuff in the form of the Black Friday box. Isn't that great? Ooh. And in addition to all that, in addition to all that, any order, any order of a book you will receive <coughs> you a complimentary uh, co- pocket-sized constitution, one per order. So, Ooh. shop SOTG.com this Black Friday weekend. Don't miss out. Some of the best sales we've ever had. Some of the best bundles we've ever had. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. Be there or be square, you freaks. Yes. Yes, indeed. Be there or be square. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me check. jump back to my show notes. Oh, and also, I just looked. Uh, if you are one of these guys that wants to make a piston-operated pistol, if you'd like to have an HK-style uh, gun, the BRN barrels, uh, you can purchase a barrel in 10.4 inch. Yes, if that's if that's your bag, man. All right, all right, all right. Looks like it's time for a student of the gun homeroom brought to you by our good buddies at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Ah, uh, remember last week, Jared asked you guys, he did a little poll. He said, uh, we talked about the custom shop, about Crossbreed Holsters custom shop. And he asked you if you would purchase, not if you like, there's a difference between I like that and I would actually purchase that. If you would, would you purchase a student of the gun logoed custom holster from our buddies at Crossbreed? And if so... Send Jared a message and tell him, yes, I would purchase that. We, we played the pink shirts game before. <laughs> We've played the pink shirts game before, and we're not playing it again. All right. All right. So uh, jump on over to Crossbreed Oster's dad, Gab. And uh, if you make a purchase, use the promo code SOTG. Let them know that Student of the Gun sent you. Support our buddies. Support Brownells. Support high point support sds imports support duracoat support our friends they need you they need to know that you're out there paying attention because we're going to see them in january and i don't want to go out there in january and walk into a booth and have a dude say um i don't know where your fans are but we never hear from them that's not what i want all right so but uh, we've got a dangerous on demand we got a story here from amoland.com Um, This just recently broke. It was broke on November 17th, 2022. Story by Lee Williams. And if you're wondering, you're like, has the left lost their minds? And I would say to you, they never had them. Uh, But uh, Zach's going to read the story for us. Zach, what's the deets? Yes, indeed. The deets are Bloomberg's propagandists now blame gas stations for Philadelphia murders. All right. The anti-gun activists at The Trace, the propaganda arm of the former New York City mayor, Michael Bloomberg's vast anti-gun empire, have created a new boogeyman for their ongoing war against our gun rights, killer gas stations. In a story published Monday titled, quote, Gas stations have become a magnet in violence for violence in Philadelphia. The author would have, to- would have you hold your breath, suspend all disbelief, and actually accept that mom-and-pop gas stations somehow play a role 
and the escalating gang violence sweeping the city, even though the author's own data does not support such a claim. So, just lying. Yeah. Well, yeah, just lying, you know. According to the story... Well, what's news? Well, what's this news? Is, this That's is right. News. According to the story, there were nine killings at Philadelphia gas stations during all of 2021 and 2022. Ooh, nine, nine, nine homicides, homicides in two years, two years in Philadelphia. Yep. However, citywide, over the same time period, there were 1,021 murders. That seems like a lot. 562 in 2021 and 459 in 2022. To be clear, gas station murders made up less than 1% of Philadelphia's total homicides. That's like a half a percent. A fraction of a percentage. And who would a young anti-gun activist turn to in order to buttress his false claim that service stations are somehow culpable for murder? How about a local attorney who has filed lawsuits against nine gas stations because people were shot in their parking lots? Well, that makes sense. It's the gas station's fault for letting someone get shot in their... What? We got a quote from this jackhole. Yes, indeed. The quote is, I don't think the public is aware of this because they may think of shootings usually happening at bars or nightclubs, especially certainly not gas stations. I'm going to go ahead and stop you right. right there, friend. Y yeah. First of all, who thinks that? Who, who, who has ever gone to a gas station and been like, yes, this is a very safe place where nothing bad ever happens? You know, gas stations are the safest place in the world. There's it's a like reason Disneyland. they call them stop and robs. Yeah. The, like, the term stop and rob has been is 20, 30 years old. Easy. Yeah. I like my local gas station. There's a gas station about five minute walk from where I live. It's on the corner. I like it a lot. I go in there. I buy food. I buy gas. I buy stuff. You know how often the cops are there? Like twice a month. Everyone when I knows grew gas up, stations aren't safe. When I was growing up in Detroit, I thought that everywhere in the world that gas stations had bulletproof glass and little, little trays to slip your money under. Because every gas station in Detroit, the clerks were behind bulletproof glass, and they had these. They had either a little, a little turnstile. If you if you bought something from behind the counter, like cigarettes or whatever, they would put them on a turnstile and spin them around to you, and you had to put your money through the little stainless steel tray, you know. Uh, and that was that was in the seventies and eighties. Yeah. So I, this is like, I don't think people. Uh, think of gas stations when they think of robberies. Really? In what planet, you fart face? Yeah, so David <laughs> P. Therusalvam is A full scumbag of, of the highest order. It's becoming an epidemic, and the gas station industry is aware of it because it's in the news all the time, but they are no doing nothing about it. What are so they the supposed to do? So the gas station industry? Yeah. And also, what are you supposed to do about people getting shot in your parking lot? Are you supposed to hire snipers to sit on top of your roof? Because I remember that was the, a thing, and the, people frowned upon it. Well, Great not town. only that, but the solution is to allow the, the, the clerks to kill the robbers. Well, no, that's not but, acceptable. But as we know, if you're a corporate store like Shell, BP, you know, fill in the blank, Maverick, you know, whatever. Corporate stores have what? They have corporate safety policies that say that all of our employees must be disarmed at all times. And if anyone comes in, just give them what they want. But what if they want what they want is to kill me? Well, I guess it sucks to be you. They'd rather remember have a the, dead employee than a lawsuit. Remember, we just had a story what was it, about two months ago where a clerk cooperated fully. I believe it was in Louisiana, wasn't it, Zach? I don't, I don't remember where it was, but I where think it was less than two months ago. Where the clerk cooperated, like gave the guy ago. everything he wanted, and then as as before the guy left, he just shot him in the face and murdered him. Or did he shoot him in the back of the head? He shot One him in the back two. of the head because what, what, cause shot him in the back of the head was don't don't go to a secondary position and don't let them dehumanize you. Yeah, because uh, uh, never surrender. I think this was it. Never surrender. Let me let me double check. Before. Yeah. So according to uh, yep. Mister Mister David P. Scumbag, um, the the gas station industry is aware of the, the, so now the now all gas stations are part of a conglomerate industry. 
Oh, it says not only is gas station industry not doing anything about the epidemic, the city of Philadelphia didn't leap into action either. What's the quote there from? We got a quote from who? Oh, uh, stations. Da, 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 da. The author wrote. So the, the author, I, I okay. guess the, the, the dude who wrote the article. While Philadelphia has no laws that address gas station safety, I guess specifically, other communities have recently approved ordinances in response to violence there. Stations can no longer stay open 24 hours in Oak Park, a close-in suburb of Chicago bisected by a blah, 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 while stations in Del Cab County outside... Del Cab. That's Atlanta. Yeah. Outside of Atlanta have been working security camera have working security cameras all the time. Uh, first of all, they're not security cameras or surveillance cameras because cameras don't provide security. Yeah. Uh, they and, just let you see what happened after it happened. And yet another let, let down for the author, a spokesman for the Philadelphia City Council told him that the city has already spent a record amount of taxpayer dollars on anti-violence initiatives, whatever the hell that means. Yeah, what adding, does that mean? Quote, none is aimed specifically at bolstering gas station security. No. Could that oh, possibly be gosh. because they are so, private, they are private uh, entities? Could well, this whole thing is just insane nonsense. But it's it's not just insane and it's not just stupid and we laugh at these people. You see, these people are they're criminally culpable in their lies. They tell lies and then the media picks up on the lies that they tell and then they continue to tell the lies and they tell it and they portray it as if it is actually the truth. And we do not want that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is these are lies. It's propaganda. It's ridiculous. However, they continue. It's like the ghost gun thing. We laughed at that idiot. We're like, oh, come on, man. It's like the the where the guy went on the floor of the House of Representatives and said that a stabilizing brace is the same as a bump stock and it turns a normal gun into a machine gun. They're flat out lies and they tell the lies and nobody calls them on the lies. So it's the it's the gas station's fault. Now, my question would be to you in the audience, who's in charge of Philadelphia? Who's in charge of Chicago? Who's in charge Prince. of Atlanta? Is it is it uh, Trumpist MAGA Republicans? No, it is not. Philadelphia, controlled by Democrats for decades. A hor- I mean, the fact that Philadelphia is a v- hyper-violent, crime-filled shite hole is not news. It's been that way forever. It's been that way my entire adult life. Philadelphia has been a crime-infested shite hole my entire life. Atlanta, crime-infested shite hole run by Democrats. Chicago, crime-infested shite hole run by Democrats. But you see, we don't want to, we don't want to admit that. Well, that's just a coincidence. That's nothing to do with anything, Paul. It's the gas station's fault for not taking this seriously. <sighs> oh yeah, all cops are bastards, and uh, yeah, we need to defund them. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. So yeah, that's uh, so you're you're dangerous on demand and. All of these cities, do they have, and and here's the crazy thing, is we've allowed, or states have allowed, these cities to enact their own gun ordinances. Like, look, look, look at New York. New York City and New York State. They said, hey, New York City and New York State, uh, they're like, "Uh, hey, uh, the Supreme Court said that that our laws are our anti-gun laws are overreaching and unconstitutional. So what did New York State and New York City do? Right, we're gonna we're gonna do even more. Oh yeah? We're gonna declare the whole city a gun free zone. Because because the one uh, 
remember Zach, who was it? Was one of the the opinion of one of the justices said, "Well, this doesn't this doesn't mean that they can't come up with special considerations." Yeah. What What, what was the phrase? What was the exact phrase? Like it was like safe zones. <sighs> yeah, something like that. If you're listening and, live, uh, what, what was the phrase that they used? And we called we called bullcrap on that from the very beginning. Uh, and and so what New York did is like, oh, well, if special gun free safety zones are allowed by the Constitution, then we'll just make Central Park a gun free zone. We'll make all of the subway stations gun free zones. We'll make all public buildings gun free zones. Uh, yada 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 yada. Uh, was it sensitive places? Yeah, sensitive places. I don't know what it. I think it doesn't that matter. was the phrase. I think that was the phrase. It doesn't matter. The fact is, crime is on the rise in all major cities. I was actually talking to someone the other day. I can't remember who it was now, and they were they were pontificating about how in Europe they're like, oh America, and in Canada they're like, oh America's, oh dab dab, you're you're more likely to be killed. You're, you know, one in seven, one out of 179 people is going to be murdered. Oh, it's Bill Frady. We're talking to Bill Frady. And, and there's, a, there's a study out there that says that with the rising crime wave, that one out of every 179 or 279, I think it is, will be murdered in their lifetime. Right. And I said, okay. You know, and we, we talked about it. And I said, ah, but here's what we know. If you remove the top 10 most populous cities of the United States from that survey, from the gun violence and murder survey, if you take away Chicago, Philadelphia, New York City, Los Angeles, Atlanta, you know, fill in, you know, keep going. If you take the top cities, top 10 most populous cities, which are all, every one of them run by Democrats. If you take those out of the equation, the United States drops to like the bottom of the list when it comes to violence. Like the, one of the safest countries on planet Earth, if you remove those cities. But see, they don't want to talk about that. This scumbag attorney in Philadelphia is not going to talk about that. He's not going to bring that up. That's does that doesn't that doesn't support my case. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, be dangerous on demand. Carry your gun. Quit talking yourself out of carrying your gun, and uh, just go forward and live your life. And don't live in Philadelphia, and don't live in Atlanta, and don't live in Chicago, and you'll be better off for it. There you go. All righty then. All righty then. And if you guys want, if you don't believe me, you're like, I don't believe you, Paul. I don't believe that a clerk surrendered and gave a scumbag everything he wanted and still got killed for his trouble. Well, we have the video. We have the story. The link's in the show notes. So, you know, live your life however you want to live it. All right, moving on, moving on. All right, going back to the beginning, what 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 are we at on time right now? There, Zach. About forty minutes and forty eight minutes and thirty seconds. We have plenty. Forty eight minutes. All right. So at the very beginning, we talked about how many of you have that annoying a hole at work, or that annoying a hole at your kid's school, or that annoying a hole neighbor who's like, you know that that every time every time there's a there's a, a dem every time a Democrat murders people. They go, they come out and they're like, that's why only the police should have guns. And if, if you didn't spit on them and walk away uh, or say those 10 words that will set you free, what are those 10 words? Zach? You are an idiot and I'm done talking to you. That's right. The 10 words that will set you free. You are an idiot and I'm done talking to you. But if you say to your idiot Karen neighbor, okay, uh, only cops should have guns because why? Because they're trained. They're the only ones that are highly trained and 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 na 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 na. Okay, 
A, where did you get those facts from there, Karen? Well, from everybody knows. Everybody who? Everybody who's an imbecile like you just knows? Actually, that's not the truth at all. Actually, most police officers are the least trained just because they had to go through a class one time. Most cops know nothing about any gun other than one that they were given. The vast majority of police officers know nothing about any firearm other than the one that they were handed, and they only know what they were forced to know. Most cops, especially in cities, are not gun people. They're not gun aficionados. They're not recreational shooters. They don't go out on their own and do it. They have a gun because it was given to them by the department, and they know about that gun and that gun only. And many of them are horrible when it comes to gun handling and safety. We've got a story from the dailybeast.com. The title alone should give you pause. Zach? And that title is Deputy Accidentally Shoots High Schooler During Classroom Drill. This is a yes! story by A.J. McDougall on the 17th of November. Oh, An Indiana yeah. student was wounded, thankfully, after a sheriff's deputy leading a high school class through a law enforcement scenario accidentally discharged his service weapon negligently. Uh, thank you. Negligently discharged his service weapon. According to whom? Vermilion County officials. The deputy was identified by Indiana State Police as Tim Dispent. Dispinet. Dispinet. A 19 year veteran of the county sheriff's department. 19 year veteran. Dispinet was instructing a popular vocational class on officer training and was conducting a so called bad guy drill when he fired his weapon, according to WTHI TV. The high school senior was grazed by the bullet, and he was taken to a local hospital where he was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Thank goodness. I hope that kid plays the lottery because he's lucky. As one lucky kid. The superintendent of the South Vermilion County School Corporation, David Chapman. Why does that name school sound familiar? school corporation? That sounds weird. Hmm. But anyway. Or maybe, whatever. Said the student it's, it's described the pain yeah. as a sting. WDRB reported. Dispanet was placed on administrative leave for the length of an investigation into the matter, a state police spokesperson said. Oh. How many, Zach, how many times have I come to this microphone and said that we never, ever, 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 except for one circumstance, use a live weapon for demonstrations? In classrooms. Between 10 and 50, I think. Now, there's one exam. There is only one caveat to that. And that is if you are, if you're teaching the people in front of you how to disassemble, reassemble, and function check an actual firearm. For instance, I'll give you for instance, I was a, a full time small arms and tactics instructor for the United States military for several years and we had to teach the the, at at the time the kids the m4 rifle and the m9 right so and one of the things that we needed to do is we needed to teach them how to disassemble it clean it reassemble it and function check it now in that circumstance you cannot do that with a red dummy gun you cannot do that with an airsoft gun. You you have to use, and, and your students all have their issued guns, whether it's a the pistol or the rifle or whatever, in front of them on the table, right? So in that situation, you can't get around it. You can't get around it. But you still follow the four universal safety rules. You don't stand on the podium with an M9 and point it at everybody in the classroom or an M4 or whatever, if you're a firearms instructor and you don't own dedicated trainers, you're not a firearms instructor. You're a clown. You're a fake. uh, You're a poser. 
but you're not a firearms instructor because a small arms and tactics instructor actually owns tools with which to conduct their job. And one of the tools that you need to have to conduct the job of a small arms and tactics instructor is you need to have replica firearms. So that when you're doing holster drills or retention drills or you're demonstrating a two handed shooting position or whatever, you don't have to point a live, real, genuine firearm at your students. Because students keep getting shot. Because people are idiots. Because arrogant douchebags who think oh, I'm the I, and this this is the Zach. I want you to find the clip. It it's called it says DEA officer shoots self in classroom. And uh it was shoot self in foot is probably the number one. There's a video. You guys, my son Zachary, this actually happened, I believe, in the year 2004. Correct. I found the exact video. It's super crushed to just to hell, but. Oh, yeah, because it's old. This was probably recorded with a flip phone. This is not recorded with an iPhone 10. This is recorded by a parent in the back of the classroom with le with a, I don't know, a Motorola flip phone or something. But I want you to play the video. And this, it, this goes all the way back. We should have learned. We should have learned uh, when this happened and decided, you know what? This is a dumb, this is a bad idea. And we need to not let this happen anymore. But you see, we didn't because Americans and, well, humans in general are stupid and they don't learn from the mistakes of others, so they keep making the same mistakes. So listen up, listen up, listen to the voice of the DEA special agent police officer as he stands in front of a, a classroom full of kids and says what? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find because it's a almost three minute long video. I'm trying to find the moment where he shoots himself. Oh, well, he yeah, he said he said fifty cent and two show. They all talk about Glock like forty. How about this? We're just gonna start about halfway in because I assume that the video doesn't go longer than that, and we'll just go from there. All right. So, oh, I didn't unmute it. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me unmute this tab. I'll never be able to show guns again. But Brian, show, bring that other gun out, Brian. <laughs> yeah. right. no, 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 You went too far. Here. He shot himself before this? Go, go to, yes, because he, he, he's the crazy. To his credit, he tried to, like, play it off like he wasn't shot. And he, he went for another gun. And then the, that's when the, 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 uh, the proctors, the teachers of the room, they're like, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. He's trying to play it cool. Yeah, he's yeah. So he he so play the one that I just gave you. Oh, okay. All right, I uh, just put a link in there. And for those of you who remember, now this has been so long that some of you guys in my audience don't remember. You're like, I don't believe this. That's not true. Like, yeah, actually, it is. And so the part of the moral of the story is, anytime if you're in a classroom and a cop comes in and he says, hey, I'm going to talk to you guys about gun safety. Turn on your phone. Turn on your turn on your camera and start recording, because chances are you're going to get a viral video out of that. All right. So now we are good to go. Yeah. Go ahead and play it. I muted the thing again. I'm, getting, I'm an idiot. One second. Not even 16 years old was killed. Because he was playing with a gun. And see, this is an unloaded gun. Right here, this is the gun. No, empty weapon. Empty weapon. This is a Glock 40. 50 cent, too short. All of them talk about Glock 40. Okay, I'm the only one in this room professional enough that I know of to carry this Glock 40. I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so... No, everybody all right? 
15 years ago, everyone I knew had seen this. Go ahead and stop. Uh, what makes it even better is he said, I am the only one in this room professional enough to handle this, this gun that I know of. Bam! <laughs> it's like instant <laughs> karma. So, well, you know what he did? He did the, he left the magazine in. He locked the slide back and jacked around out. He showed, he showed it to a guy standing next to him. He walked over, jacked the, the, the slide back, locked, he locked it open, around came out. He showed it to the guy. Then he walks over. He's standing in front of the kids. He reaches up with his thumb, lets the slide go, points it down in his, at the floor, and presses the trigger. There's so many things wrong. And, and that is, that was a DEA special agent, right? And you know what's the funny thing about that? And you guys in my audience who are cool, if you're hip cats, you know that that guy. Right, when that video got released and the whole world saw it, right? So he filed a lawsuit against the DEA claiming that they defamed his character because people saw that and he couldn't, I don't know, go out in public or whatever. So real quick, uh, j just kind of a funny thing. The top pinned comment on this video is from Scribbling on the Walls. This is an unloaded gun. Brackets, PolitiFact, mostly false. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he sued the DEA, and the law and the lawsuit went on for years. And finally, it got to a, a panel of judges or a judge, and they threw it out. They're like, "No, you are a complete imbecile." And actually. You know, I know that this guy went through a firearms training class at some point in his life. At some point. And he violated, I'm assuming, everything, every safety rule that he was taught, he violated there. Treat all guns as if they're always loaded all the time. Never allow, never put your finger on the trigger until you're, until what, Zach? Until your eyes are on target and your, until your sights are on target. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sights and you've made a decision, made to decision to shoot. Decision to shoot, yeah. Uh, never allow the muzzle to cover anything you're not willing to destroy, destroy, which would include yourself, your own. Was it just two weeks ago uh, that we had the uh, story of the California cop? Was it two or three weeks ago? California cop shot himself through the hand. The bullet passed through his hand and into the guts of his buddy. I don't remember this one. And his buddy died. Yeah, it was just two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Really? Yeah. Uh, officer, officer shoots self and friend, friend dies. An off-duty New York, no, an off-duty New York police officer kills a woman and wounds another. Uh, no, that's not it. Um, it was in California. I, we, we believe. Oh, yeah. We, we Salinas. So, uh, October 26th. A Salinas, Salinas County. Uh. An off-duty officer cleaning his gun mistakenly shoots self and kills bystander. Shot himself through the hand and into the buddy standing next to him. His hand had a hole in it. His buddy died. Police officer. So we got it. You're like, okay, that's just one example. Okay, that's two examples. Okay, that's just that's only three examples of police officers negligently shooting themselves or other people. Well, here we go again. StarTelegram.com, Zach. This is the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Yes, indeed it is. It's November seventh, twenty twenty two. Samson Park officer remains in hospital after being shot in face. During police training, a Sansom's, uh, the thing I just said, uh, over the weekend during a law enforcement training session at an elementary school oof, in Forest Hill, hopefully, no, there wasn't any kids there. Officer mm. Lena Mino, I like that name, Lena Mino, 32, underwent surgery as a result of her head trauma. Mino, a patrol officer, quote, will require additional surgeries in the near future. Erica Smith of Keller. Of Keller wrote on GoFundMe. Of Keller, Keller's a city in Texas. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Where an account 
for Mino was wrote created on a, on a GoFundMe account. Yeah, wrote, I said that. Wrote on a yeah. GoFundMe account where in a, bleh, where an account for Mino was created to raise funds for her medical expenses and for the travel of her relatives. Um, Trey, real quick, go I'm going to go ahead and say that her relatives, whether it's her husband or parents, I'm not sure if she had, was married, uh, that the Samson Park Police Department is probably going to be writing a sizable check to her and this family. And I'm pretty sure that police officers have ins- medical insurance to cover them when they're shot by other cops. I don't know. The training session during which Mina was shot occurred on Saturday at David K. Sellers Elementary School in Forest Hill. It was conducted by police by Texas Police Trainers LLC, according to <laughs> Hey Texas Police Trainers LLC. Here's some freaking. Uh, uh, you, you guys are you. some high speed bros. According to the Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, what's the last part there? The Janice Washington, the Killen based company's owner, said Killeen. Killeen. Amazing that this company, where the woman was shot in the face, was was called Killeen. Killeen. It's a Killeen base. It's a city. I know. Killeen is a city in Texas. Has the word killing is the joke. Said in a brief telephone conversation. Killeena. We're all devastated by this. Washington declined to answer questions and noted the matter was under review. The Texas Rangers are investigating the shooting. A spokesperson for the agency has declined to describe all its circumstances in detail. The session was an active shooter training not supposed to involve live fire. And weapons were prohibited. According to no. uh, weapons were prohibited, prohibited, according to Forest Hill Police Chief Eddie Burns Sr. Authorities have said that the shooting was an accident and they were investigating how no. a live round was fired during the training. Meanwhile, was shot around 2 p.m. at the elementary school. Participating officers rendered aid until Med Star crew arrived, according to the police. She was taken okay, to here's the, the deal. hospital in Fort Worth. Oh. Uh, <sighs> It was not an accident, Chief Eddie Burns. It was an accident. No, it was negligence, and negligence is not the same. Uh, we, we should have hammered on that during the previous one where the cop shot the kid in the training class. We mentioned it. We it was that. not an accidental discharge. It was a negligent discharge. Negligence is not the same as an accident. You see, negligence is when you fail to address a a known threat or a known risk. When your actions, well, when your actions result in the injury of a person because you failed to either take preventative action or you did something that you should not have done. When the gun goes bang because your booger hook was on the curvy thing and you pressed it backwards, that's not an accident. You see, guns are supposed to go bang. They're supposed to fire. The gun's job, here, watch this. All right, you see that? That is a real gun. That is a real Glock Model 48. The job of this gun, it has one job. That is to launch bullets on demand, right? That is the job of that gun. So if that gun fires, when you press the curvy thing and push it backwards, the gun's not wrong. The gun did exactly what it was supposed to do. Who's wrong is you. Who's wrong is the cop. The DEA agent was wrong. The gun wasn't wrong. The guy in uh, the guy who was, quote, in Salinas, who was, quote, cleaning his gun and it went off. First of all, that's such a load of crap. Every time someone has a negligent discharge, they're like, I was cleaning it. Oh, you're doing a terrible job. That was negligence. That was a negligent homicide. The cop who got shot in the face, it was negligent because, well, they're trying to figure out 
why there was a live loaded gun in the training are they trying to figure that out wow i don't i don't know how they figure that out you folks remember about a year 18 months ago when we came to these microphones and talked about how the most dangerous training you can participate in is not live fire training like what it's actually force on force training force on force training is actually the most dangerous training you can participate in because in force on force training people are deliberately pointing objects that look and that behave like firearms at each other on purpose deliberately we talked about how a uh, situation in uh, Tennessee where a guy was participating in force on force training and got shot through the neck and is now paralyzed for life because they broke for lunch everybody went away had lunch came back they continued the training dude drew a live gun shot a dude through the neck paralyzed him for life we talked about how if you're going to conduct force on force how the person who's in charge of it has to be an absolute get ready to hit the button zach they have to be an absolute asshole. you can beep that you have to be the the consummate range safety nazi there's none of this oh we're all adults here we're all big boys we're all professionals we all know what we're doing we just listed not one not two not three four instances where quote trained professionals put bullets into people that shouldn't have had bullets put into them and not in the same place all in different places because why because number one laziness intellectual laziness and, and also arrogance i'm the only one in this room professional enough to handle this gun bow oops first of all don't ever say that <laughs> that's bad karma if you say that i'm the only one in this room who is professional enough to handle a gun Pow! ladies and gentlemen this is not a joke people are dead people are paralyzed people will never this 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 chick uh if she survives uh she's she's probably going to be scarred for life she's probably going to be uh handicapped for life she was shot in the face right through the head i don't know where the bullet entered i don't know where it exited i don't know if it went in and stayed um but she's looking at years of rehabilitation uh the situation of salinas in california where the guy shot himself through the hand and then into his buddy uh his buddy's dead so he's done uh the guy who shot himself in the foot and the guy who uh, shot the kid you know at very least if you only shoot yourself it's it's i guess better off you know i, I mean it still counts if you shoot yourself but at least if, if you're going to have a negligent discharge shoot yourself what happens is we have negligent discharges and innocent people get shot and why is that and ladies and gentlemen i understand that there are you know new people but the the guy in the in the um high school classroom that shot the kid that guy was had been on the force for 19 years right now the the one that where the kid the guy shot himself through the hand and killed his buddy he'd only been on the department for like six months or something there eight months when that happened so if you are an older seasoned officer you have to be the absolute 
range Nazi. You have to be the safety Nazi. You have to be the mean guy that doesn't let anyone come into the training area until they've been for and We used to actually uh, use two things. We would use magn magnometers, right? A handheld magnometer uh, and also frisk people. Like actually pat them down. Now, cops and professionals like, hey, I don't, what's that? Magnometer is a little handheld metal detector, right? Yeah, a handheld metal detector. We'd use handheld metal detectors and uh, also pat people down. And you're like, oh, come on. That's a, and see, you're like, that's overkill. That's too much. That's, we're, we're, that's an insult. We're all professionals here. You see, every one of these situations that we talked about was not deliberate. It was negligent. They were all negligent. How do you prevent negligence? Through training and by holding fast to the protocols, the universals. Now, see, the trick, the trick with uh, force on force training uh, is that the four universals don't save you because you're deliberately pointing something that looks like a gun smells like a gun, feels like a gun, but it's not supposed to be an actual gun at humans. So you cannot be saved by the four universals in a force on force situation. You can only be saved by stringent protocols. And when you don't enforce those because you're afraid to offend people, oh, I don't need you treating me like an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I know what I'm doing. I'm the most professional person in this room. Bam. Yeah. I bet you everybody in there, everybody who had a gun in their hand and put a bullet into a person that wasn't supposed to have a bullet put into them would have before that described themselves as a trained professional. I'm a trained professional. I don't need you treating me like a child. Okay. Trained professionals. You see, there, the, the sad thing is, and we're going to wrap it up now. The sad thing is, is none of the, the Karens, the, the imbecile Karens and Kyles that would say, only the police should have guns. And nah, 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 nah. You, you can't, you wouldn't be able to give them this information because their cognitive dissonance would not allow them to sit through it. By the before you could explain to them that these four, four, I mean, I could go, I could, we could do an entire show. We could do a 90 minute radio show just ticking off cops who shot innocent people. New York City. Heck, we could just do a show on, on New York City cops who shot innocent people and then said, shouldn't ought to be standing there. Maybe not the worst thing in the world. If you wasn't standing there, you wouldn't have got shot. Yeah. Next, next time, I guess you won't be standing there. You know what we need to do? We need to make a what? poster. What? The four universal safety rules. Hmm. I don't know. It's pretty hard. It's pretty difficult. Yeah, it's physically there, impossible. Never mind. It's, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> but, yeah. So, the next time you... And, and just in case, you, you might have someone, a reasonable person in your life, it's like, well, you know, I can see... Oh, Police officers, only police officers should be allowed to have certain kinds of guns because they're the, the most qualified. They're the trained professionals. Yeah, when, when the DEA agent shot himself, we should have, that should have been it. The whole country should have learned. They were like, okay, you can't hide this anymore because that was at the very beginning of the internet. That was way back in like 2004, 2004, 2005. Oh, uh, so that was like really when 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 you watched that video, you had to wait for it to buffer and load. You had to like read a paperback book while that video buffered and loaded. I know uh, we can get a great paperback book, but we already talked about that. Yeah. So when that happened, everyone, every officer in America, every police agency in America should have said, whoa, what happened here? And how can we make sure that doesn't ever happen again? But they didn't, did they? So, 
Yeah. And you're like, how dare you bash police officers? Here's the deal. Poli- putting on a polyester uniform does not make you a saint. You know, the, the whole every cop is a saint is just as stupid as the all cops are bastards. Just because you put on a uniform doesn't make you a bastard. And just because you put on a uniform, it doesn't automatically make you a saint. It doesn't make you perfect. It doesn't make you a firearms expert. People need to be judged by their actions and by their behaviors. And I don't care what kind of polyester uniform you have on. There are good police officers in America. There's not many left, but there are some. And there are a lot of people in polyester uniforms that are tyrants, that are bullies, and that are clowns. Just because you put on a uniform doesn't automatically make you a saint and doesn't mean that we can't question your behavior. You can't question that guy. How dare you question them? They're, they're, they swore an oath to what? What did they swear an oath to do? Preserve and defend the Constitution of the United States? Yeah, there you go. So there you have it. Cat and hat. And that be that. Uh, you can bring this all up at Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. If you have an anti-gun a-hole uh, for a relative, you've got an uncle or an aunt that's a, a super leftist anti-gun person that's, uh, you know, only police should be allowed to have guns. Really? Did you see the story where the police officer shot the kid in a classroom? Did you see the other story where the police officer shot himself did you see the story where the police officer shot the other police officer see that one yeah exactly exactly yeah. well those were accidents no they weren't it was negligent there's a difference and you're an idiot i win i win this argument you're a moron go home and cry <laughs> <sighs> oh yes indeed yes indeed. yes indeed is there anything else we need to tell the kids are there any questions um uh, we don't really have any questions that uh the people in the discord are having a very uh good are they conver- having fun they're having a good conversation about this topic at hand so mm. another reason to join the, the discord is you can engage yeah, in these yeah. conversations uh, and also nick says that he's in on the uh for universal safety rules poster so if there you go is really interested let me know Nicholas yeah, Orr? I, Nicholas Orr, is he in all that? <laughs> He'll one? take one. Okay. Nick, uh, okay, so we got two. We got two Nicks. But yeah, other than that, uh, just a reminder that we do not, uh, there's not going to be any grad program episodes tomorrow or Friday, but there yeah. will be the little quiz thingy. Not the quiz, but like the survey. So if you want to take that and go through the backlog, that'll be a good time. And I think we can wrap up because I got to go potty. Yeah, and I, I got a good haircut. I got a haircut appointment today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, cat and hat and that be that. Remember, kids, as always, you're a beginner once, but you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.